Darren Green, Director of Marketing for Costeco. I want to invite, I want to welcome you to the 2022 Audit Show at the Costeco booth here at Detroit, Michigan. I want to start, first start off by showing you kind of an overview of the booth. We have a really nice 30 by 40 booth here in the Audit Show. Up front, we have our Twitch products and the technology that we're going to be launching later this year. Our cobot, we'll come back and talk to uh, Jim Gary later on in the broadcast about our cobot software. So come on in here, guys. I want to start off going this demo here. This demo is a great representation of the Jayco technology at work and how it all works together. As you can see in this demo, we have manual plants on our internal field. We have manual plants. Seiko's known for a lot of things. One of our Hallmark product lines are our red handle toggle lamps. Even though we've been in business since 1915, these particular products have been on the market for about 86 years. Very, very long time. We have a lot of legacy products that we continue to supply to the industry for fixturing applications, for checking fixtures, by use of any form of manufacturer. Some of the things we want to highlight here at the show today are some of the newer products that we've been able to launch. Basis so that you can mount the top of the plant on a vertical surface as opposed to a horizontal surface. So we have several different vertical handle and horizontal handle versions of those. We've also recently launched a variety of different stainless steel products. Stainless steel is very attractive to food, pharma, medical applications, or where you just need to have some corrosion resistance because there's contaminations in the environment. We've launched a complete line of stainless steel products, um, both with uh, our fold down clamps, our latch clamps, our strict line clamps, with and without our toggle lock plus uh, that is a We also, several years ago, launched our 5000 series, which are heavy duty manual toggle clamps for very demanding applications. But what you'll, what you'll find is the stake, well, even though we've been doing this for a long time, we continue to innovate to bring new solutions to the marketplace to meet your fixturing and clamping needs. As an example, we recently just launched our manual swing clamp. A very, very uh, versatile product. Instead of having an auto automated swing clamp, we have the manual version. And now we're also working on a smaller version of that to help round out the product line. As people start segueing from manual clamping, wanting to start to automate their processes, we provide a lot of different styles of pneumatic products. Here's some examples here of pneumatic string clamps, pneumatic lever clamps. Here's a pneumatic hold down clamp, which is basically an automated version of one of our most popular manual clamps. And then we get into also automated plants which are designed for millions of cycles in a variety of different manufacturing applications. As we move over here, we also have a variety of different styles of power plants. used very, very widely in the automotive industry, in the body and white area for welding applications and different cell things. One of the newest innovations we came out with a few years ago is our tolerance compensator. What this plant allows you to do, because it's 
not block over center, but rather gives you a range of clamping thicknesses that you can clamp against, plus or minus three millimeters, so that uh, you can have parts that vary in thickness, for example, or very inconsistent. This will compensate for that. We also have manual versions of our power plants. So if someone's doing prototyping or setup work, it's of a, more of a pre-production environment. You can use this type of product that emulates the action of an automated power plant, but allows you to do it. We also have some additional products that we make available, locating pins, if you need to locate the product to a hole. We have locating hook pin clamps, which can locate to a hole, but a hook also comes up and enables you to clamp through that hole. We also have miniature power clamps, and we also have power clamps that have additional accessories, like an automated hole device, which allows you to keep the clamp arm in the open position so it does not fall forward. product line in our portfolio is probably going on 20 years, but we've made several advancements over that period of time. The latest advancement we've made with the 82L series product line is to allow you as the customer who's setting this up to adjust the opening angle yourself, so it's field adjustable. This can be adjusted anywhere from 5 degrees to 135 degrees in arm opening, simply by taking the two screws out, pulling the center block out. With a quick turn, you can position the arm where you want it to stop, retighten the bolt, and now your clamp will only open that far. So it's a very, very configurable, very flexible product line, uh, which is, that's a new innovation for us that no one else in the industry is doing. And we also have that available currently on the 82 m Thank you, Thank you, Darren. Thanks for joining us. We're going to move over here and talk to Jim Gary, who is our engineering manager for Ripper. We're going to go over our Cobot and the new technology new product that we're bringing out for our Cobot uh, product. Yeah, so first I should explain what Cobots are. Most people are familiar with robots and things that they Cobots are designed to work alongside people and even programmed by non engineers. The idea here is to bring out and democratize robots through process. All industries. We are moving into industries that we've never even been in. So it's a very interesting, huge area of growth for us. There are two major uh, areas of use for robots right now: metallicizing and machine loading. We'll talk about machine loading in a minute. Metallicizing. This is a, uh, a larger version of uh, a robot. They don't get much bigger than this because the idea is they need to work with people and around people. So they can't be too big, they can't be too dangerous, and they can't be going too fast. Uh, this one is able to uh, palletize using our end effector system. Along with cobots being simple to use, we want to make them simple to design uh, tooling for. So normally this type of tooling would be custom designed by the vehicle per the special application the customer is doing. The way we've done it now is we've simplified it so that when you go to select, you need to know just three things. You need to know the length of your box, the width of your box, and the weight of the box. That's all you need to design one of these systems. They come in kits. Uh, they ship directly from the shelf so you can have them in days. And they assemble literally with very simple instructions. You also show here the Raptor tool chamber. And the rapid tool changer just made the change there, changing from the larger size manufacturer to the smaller size manufacturer in order to pick the small box in place. The rapid tool changer is half the height of our competition and it is half the weight, but yet it has twice the payload and twice the moment load capabilities. Uh, it's made out of solid stainless steel and it's a very powerful tool changer. It comes with four different drive and locking concepts. One is a direct pneumatic lock and unlock, which is modular, 
And by the standard rafter, you just mount this uh, module for the open enclosure. Then we also have a similar version of this schematic that has a locking feature, making it so that you can never drop a tool. You will always have to lock and unlock inside the mask, which is where the other one is stored there. That locking feature makes it so that you can never have a problem with dropping a tool during the enclosure. It also has a handle version, uh, a manual version for locking and unlocking. And there's also a version that mechanically locks in the nest by the motion of the robot. So let's watch it here. It's going to come up, it goes into the nest, and it slides. And in that version, that sliding motion actually opens and unlocks and locks again. The beauty of that is that you're using just the motion of the robot. You don't need an extra drive uh, like a, an electric motor or something like that. The cobot itself does the lock and unlock. And again, a very important point, you cannot drop the tool. You can only unlock and separate the tool in the nest, nowhere else. And that's important. In a lot of cases, tools can be very expensive and dropping the tool can be dangerous as well. So that's why that's used for this type of adapter. Now, I know you have this Raptor has been very much a popular uh, product to look at. Very, very well received. Yeah. When is it going to be available? Well, actually, it's interesting to test. So, uh, this version right now is actually designed for a, a robot that we're going to take a look at a little bit later. Uh, so, this is actually oversized for this application. We're going to uh, develop one of the uh, leading or the leading uh, robot manufacturer walked over here. The other man said, I want that. And so we're going to design one specifically for that size uh, starting next week. So I can't, I don't have a date for it, but we're on it as far as design. So it's going to be an important tool. Let's move over to the machine loading. Yeah, so machine loading is this, the other big application for uh, cobot grippers. And the problem is it's hard to find labor these days. And in these applications, typically, you have someone taking parts out manually, putting them into the machine, letting the machine run, taking the part out, putting it into a finished tray. As long as you have trays that hold your parts and you know the locations of those, you can very simply program a cobot to come in, pick up the part, put it into the machine. In this particular case, we have an air blow off that's blowing chips away. We pick up the finished part. We rotate around. We insert the new blank that's going to be machined. And then we put the finished part over in the tray. So again, this is uh, very popular now uh, due to labor shortages. And it's very easy to implement. Uh, there's an interesting story about a company that was a machine shop and they couldn't find workers. They, inter they integrated six of these into their shop, and they thought it was so easy that they went out and they now sell the service of integrating it for other shops. That's how <laughs> simple it is. So it's really um, uh, a, a huge moneymaker for the people who use it. The return on investment on these is in a matter of months. It's very short. So let's walk over to the, uh, the Cobot Solutions table. Yep. Kind of give you a good example of all of our offerings. Yeah, let's start the bottom of the bottom of the So we have a new design for uh, base mounting of a cobot. Cobots in general are relatively small and light. So the of the device allows you to pick up that cobot. Imagine that we have the same thing over at another work center. I can put that one point box, bring it over to that other work center, and I'll have two points. So, the same for that. Uh, in any case, the customer may not need a full time robot at each location that they have the machine on but they want to utilize that robot as much as possible so they can get up to the The other important feature about uh, the robot mounting is uh, the uh, initial company that sort of opened the cobot mock market to the world has had their mounting pattern uh, using a standard ISO pattern, which means that most of the other cobot companies follow that same mounting. 
So what that allows us to do is to have all these products down to 90% of robots on the market. And that's a big deal because it's very simple to select. Uh, you know, we have a, in our catalog, we have a list of exactly which robots directly mount our products. So here we've got an example of a pneumatic gripper, a RoboHand pneumatic gripper. And we have, this, is, this represents a robot. In the side of the robot wrist is the plug. And so we have sensors that uh, now direct that program it uh, using the, uh, the program software from the actual robot. In addition, uh, because this is a pneumatic uh, device, you would have to bring up air to the If you can't use compressed air in your application, you would go to a, uh, an electric version. This is a different version, a different cobot. It still mounts the same. And on it, it has on the side, again, an interface for electrical power and signal. So we have our DPE 200 gripper with a cable that is customized to each cobot. The reason it's customized to each cobot is the pinouts and uh, uh, signals for the various cobots are different on these connectors. So we have a cord set that has sensors in it power and, and command to the co uh, to the uh, gripper. It directly mounts and it's a plug and play application and Cobot users don't want to spend a lot of time setting up something. They want to be able to attach it, plug it in, and run it. So let's talk about tool changing here for a minute. So this is used over there for machine loading and unloading. As you can see, it's got two grippers on it and then an air blow off the blow away chips. In this particular instance, it's mounted to a TC1 tool plate. The TC1 tool plate has a master half that has the pattern of the cobot on it. It mounts to the cobot, it plugs into the cobot, and it has an electrical pass through for the cobot. Simply connect the two together manually. That power can pass through to the sensors on the unit. Uh, you can supply air to the grippers uh, separately with air lines. Uh, but what's important about this is it makes it very easy to change to any other tool. Quite literally, this simply. Oops. Unlocking it very simple. So it's a good, uh, solid connection, very stiff, very precise. Now, if we talk about the types of gripping that we have, here's a good example. Uh, we have magnetic gripping. We have pneumatic gripping using compressed air. We have vacuum gripping. And we have electric gripping. So just about any way you need to pick up a part, we have the ability to do it. And this is actually shown on a multi-mount. What multi-mount is, is a way to mount many tools to a cobot. Again, if somebody's buying a cobot, they may want to try to do several things with that same cobot. So the idea is the customer has the ability to buy the various mounts depending upon what they want to mount to it. This allows them to take one cobot and utilize it to do five different uh, operations. So you just turn your cobot from one into five very, very quickly. Uh, we also have a storage. Very simple storage for the various uh, tools. And there are, is also an interesting uh, version of the TC1 tool plate. This is the ISO 50 mounting pattern. This is what you find on most of the cobots out in the world. And what we do here is we take the electrical from the cobot, pass it through this connector into this plate and it comes out here just like it comes out on the cobot then you mount a cobot ready product directly to this so what you've done here is you've emulated the cobot anything that can mount to the cobot directly can mount to this setup directly and let's see i think that Thank you.
great for press shop applications. That's what it's targeted for. Uh, so you get different tips, whether the serrated, uh, polyurethane, point tips. And then you can move over to the 84N2, which is the same size, except now that it is a uh, fixed tip. Sorry, it's over here. Then that you can easily change between cool or single, serrated, a variety of tips. Great it in that small space. Our Cadillac of, of pressure shop is the 84N5. And that is not, it's a little hard to see, but we offer a full of different adapters for every automation section. Um, all kinds of different tips. Uh, jaw configurations, whether they're 90 degree, straight, rock jaw, double open. And in general, they also offer fully adjustable opening angle. So you can open from anywhere from 75 on the top, 75 on the bottom, to uh, adjustable down to 15 degrees minimum. And that's, that's done and accomplished by this adjustable uh, thumb screw right here, where you loosen it up, back that out, and this jaw will open up to the degrees that are marked on the opposite side. So there's no guesswork. If you wanna show that, uh, there's no guesswork on what your opening angle is. It's marked on the sign that's very precise. So most applications are 30 degree, 45, 60, or 75. We cover that with one unit. So if you're a, in a pressure shop application you want to standardize, this is the part for that. Not only are the tips common with the 84 and 2, we need a smaller one to get into that application. But uh, you can also use them on the end. On top of that, should you want to do a change out on the configuration, you want to change the jaws from a straight, straight on jaws to 90 degrees or add a drop down, it takes about five minutes to take off those screws, pull the jaws out, put the new jaws in, put it back together, and you're going to put it in the new configuration. We offer tips for all of that, so it's easy to break. Walk around and actually show it in action right now. Actually, it's another product line that we haven't talked about yet with our Campo indexers and conveyors. Well, actually, here is our large robot display that we have um, this year. The 84N series of products are right here on the end of the robot. Gary, you want to tell us a little bit more about what's going on here? So let's grab that piece of sheet metal off of, off of the structure. Grab it, hangs on tight. It's a thousand to twelve hundred newton grip force. Just going to place it in and let our uh, clamps lock it down. But as you can see, those are ninety degree jaws and it can be figured in any or orientation. And once it grips on, it's a locked grip. So if we lose power, it's not going to drop that part. But in this demonstration, we're going to do a tool change. And what we're going to see is our indexer product. Camco line of products. So I'll get into that. Yep. We'll translation right into that. Um, where we're doing a train. So in this demonstration, we have a DTB system indexer. The advantage of that is it's servo control. It's extremely low profile, can maintain a high payload capacity in a very small space. So compared to a traditional um, cam-driven system, the GTB is half that size with the same capabilities. Uh, fully, fully programmable. I'm uh, waiting for the demo to catch up to us here. We're starting to rotate. So, the one application that Camco typically hasn't demonstrated is the ability that, yes, our indexes can be positioned in any orientation. In this case, we have it on its side. This, GTB series could also be used upside down. Uh, traditionally, we show them all sitting on a table or in a machine. 
but I'm not sure when this is going to rotate. <laughs> it should be rotating here shortly, I'm telling you. But again, this is a great example of all of our products working in action. We have our pneumatic clamps, we have our vacuum pumps in here as well, our end effector product line, as Jerry mentioned, the 84 inch. In general, yeah, you're looking at uh, a tool change going on with our, our state-of-the-art pressure shop gripper going to a state-of-the-art indexer in our clamping systems. So it's a kind of a demonstration of how to switch tools from pneumatics to sheet metal, uh, rotating the line. This one. The one thing you'll notice with the GTB is the large center hole. So we can run the utilities right through there uh, to get to the tooling system that needs the air or the, or the electricity. So Gary, let's walk around and talk about our conveyors and our FOE. Precision Link, the Staco has, is our brand, the Staco has done exceptionally well with our conveyor business. It's precision, capability, custom designed for the applications, fully supported uh, to the Campo applications team. So instead of you trying to design, because you're trying to design, what do I need for, for my application, they work with the Campo application team. They help pick the product, they help design the product, support that system to that customer. So it's a, it's a great application. On top of that, uh, we are working on tools that eventually allow you to online size that product. So that 24-7 you can get your CAD model, put it into your application, integrate it in, see that it fits what you're trying to do. Yeah, we're actually going to be showing that right here. We're actually showing our sizing tools that we have and we'll be launching on our website soon. Again, we have our hand code sizing tools, our mobile hand sizing tools, our power code sizing tools. All this is going to be available for everybody to use on our website in the coming months. So we can do it right away. We know exactly what we're going to do with the product that we need to have the right on our website. Most importantly, especially with the things that are sizing tools,
application we put a combination of our slide thick with our gripper with rotaries on the bottom picking up a Bluetooth speaker that's just transferring it from one conveyor system over to another in, in, in theory. But that, that line is uh, manufactured both in North America and in